Sticking with our sample 2013 database and our FRM employees form, which is starting to really pretty up now with the extra fields and the bright headers, what we're now going to have a look at are combo boxes, so drop downs. In our data here, we have three fields that would really benefit from a drop down the sex or gender, which is currently displaying a number that would be better displaying male or female, marital status. I would quite like to have a drop down box there of the available options. There are only really three. Sin, Ma and Div. And then the departments. Again, that would be quite useful to have a drop down. So if we go into design, let's close the property sheet for a second. I'm going to leave the three fields there so we can see our combo boxes in action. And to add a combo box, we go to the form design tools design and then into the controls. Make sure that the wizard is turned off. And then we'd like to add a combo box. So that's this option here come down and add a combo box. And the first one we're going to add is the easiest, which is the marital status. That is simply three values to choose from, ma, sin, and div. So let's change the label to start with. I'm going to call it status. And then to control the combo box, we need the properties. So we select the combo box and then choose the property sheet. So that appears. Close the navigation pane up for a short second. In the property sheet, First thing I want to do is bind this combo box to the marital status field. So in data, I change the control source from nothing to marital status. Now what that will do when I view the form is make sure that it displays marital status as it appears. It doesn't do anything with the combo boxes yet. We now know it's actually attached to the correct field. Then we need to supply values for the combo box itself. So that's classed as the row source. So what's going to supply the data for the row source? Firstly, we need to define that in the row source type. So this is going to be a value list. I'm simply going to give access a list of the options. And those options are ma, sin, and div. Each of the options separated by a semicolon so that access knows that they are separate values. Then when we view, we see the combo box has ma, sin, and div. And it keeps the correct value that is currently in the record. So Lord Michael Fontenroy is currently down as div, but I can change him to ma, and that will be saved when I go away and come back. He retains his ma option. So that's the easiest of the combo boxes. A simple value list. So we've added the combo box, changed the row source type to value list, and then added the values separated by semicolons. Let's do the gender one. So back in the controls, we want another combo box. Change the label to gender. On the control side, first thing we do in the property sheet is connect that to the sex field. So that when you view, you'll see ones and twos. And again, just like when we did the status, there's no data at all in the combo box. This time I do want a row source type. Where do I want to get the data from? Which row? Of which table? Well, in the drop list here, which has suddenly appeared, I get to choose from all the tables in my database. So it's TBL gender. Now, in TBL gender, there are effectively only two fields the gender ID and the gender label. The gender ID I need to retain as the value to be stored in the employees table. So that's classed as the bound column. And we have here bound column one, which is going to be that ID. However, I don't need to see that column. So what I can do is change to format. So I'm still looking at the combo box and we can see here column count one, column widths. Let's change the column count to two and set the width to zero, semicolon one. By setting the column count to two, I'm allowing both columns to be visible in the combo box. So that's the ID and the label. However, I don't want to see the ID. So I set its first column width to zero and the second column width to one measurements being the default measurements for your system, which is currently inches. So it's no inches and one inch. When I now view, I get to see male and female. See the one up here, I've retained this on purpose. So if I change that to female, you can see it changes the sex value to two. So we know that underneath the underlying data is correctly updating the TBL employees, but much more user friendly is I'm getting to see the word male or the word female as a human. 
So that's using the table as the row source for my combo box, TBL gender, and then in format, controlling how many columns are available and then how much of those columns we see. So two columns are available. First one, we make a zero width so you can't see it. And the second one, we make an inch wide. The last of our combo box options is a little bit more complicated. Combo box. This is the department. Now the department, the options here do not exist in another table. So I can't match them to another table. However, I can match them to a SQL statement. And we've been playing around with our SQL, which will allow me to pull out the unique departments within the employees table. So in data, first we need to add a control source, which is the department. So that anything I use this combo box for goes into the department field. My row source is a table or a query, and those are my options, or I can write my own. Don't forget to allow the wizard to let you zoom in. So if I want the departments, but the unique values, I do select. It doesn't need it, but we're just going to keep it that way. Distinct department from TBL employees. So I'm asking it to show me unique departments from the employees table. OK. And then when we view, we see the current department for Wendy, which is clerical. And my combo box displays each of the other departments that are available in this table. If I choose finance, Wendy changes to finance. You can see here I've left this one in place so you can see it respond. Accounts changes to accounts. Sales, she changes to sales. So that's a slightly different use of the combo box there. It's actually pulling the data for the combo box from the current table. So if a new department were to be added, that would then appear in the combo box list to be used for other employees. So we have the first one, which is straightforward list values, each value separated by a semicolon. We have the second one, which is pulling from another table where we needed the ID, but we hid that from the humans. The humans want to see the data labels, so male and female. And then we had the clever combo box actually pulling its data from the current table that this form is based on, but showing a distinct value for each of the departments. So unique department. Those are manual builds of a combo box drop lists that allow you to make your forms more user friendly in Access.